can you walk us through like a little process of like how you're going to make a post? Like I'd be, I would be fascinated. Yeah. Um, it's funny cause I used to record them at my gym and like one of my followers slash friends at the gym was like, Oh, this is how the sausage is made. <laughs> and I was like, Ooh, behind the scenes. All right. But I don't think of it like that. Um, so I guess what I do is kind of how I would handle it with a patient that walks in through my door. So I'm going to try and give them, you know, at least some sort of like myofascial that they can do on themselves. Cause like whether you're man pro manual therapy or not manual therapy, like, touching or rubbing the area is helpful generally. Um, then I'm going to try and give them at least like a mobility something and then a strengthener because the strengthened part is really what people, you know, that's, it's not instant gratification. So that's what they kind of lose out on. So I just kind of take it that way for a lot of things. Um, and then I have really been trying to do, I feel like if I do too complicated, I get a lot of people that are like, well, how does someone at the beginning start? And then if I keep it too simple, people are like, I, I passed this a long time ago. So I've really tried to like intertwine back and forth a little bit, but you're going to get people that like, you know, they're either way past it or they're not that advanced yet. Um, so they're not going to like it either way. Then I'm pretty middle of the ground for a lot of my just philosophical, like my, how I kind of operate things too. So I don't feel like I'm out there saying like really outlandish, outlandish stuff. I don't know if you guys saw the recent drama on the social media in the last week or so. Um, so I'm pretty midline like that. So people don't come after me real hard for a lot of things. Um, but if they we, do, we oh, miss, we miss the drama. I mean, so there was a post I mean, if about, you want to, it wasn't my drama. So okay. I hate to like reiterate it, but there may have been a post from a big account that said, High waisted pants uh, might shut off your core. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. And some people had major issues with that. So I don't come out with any of that. So I kind of stay pretty yeah. midline with it. So I don't get a ton of like backlash. Um, that but, did get a lot of backlash. That was did. fun. I didn't even, I saw people like <laughs> posting the anti high waisted pants shut off your core. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I didn't know where it was from. I was like, oh, who's, who said this? And, I and then I saw the post. I was like, oh, those guys. Uh huh. Uh, it's fascinating. But, but here's the other thing too that I look, I mean, I'm sure I've said things on this podcast that are just absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> they're like, with the amount that people like you and those people, we won't mention their names, mm -hmm. who post that much, have that much content out there, like how it, it you're you you're gonna anger somebody. I mean, that's a little bit uh, crazy of a, a statement. I don't think mm -hmm. you're saying anything like that, but but still, you have to kind of step out at some point and like you're like, I know there's gonna be people that hate this post. There's yep. gonna be someone out there, but I'm just gotta I've just gotta do it, like how do you get through that? Does that make sense? Because I know that yeah. there are a lot of people who want to become, you know, want posts, like, you know, pages like yours, but they're a little bit held back. Like, how do you fight through some of that stuff? So I would say I did, there's, when you are forming your community, your tribe, whatever you want to call them, it's pretty much all love in the beginning. Then eventually you get a post that kind of blows up. And that's when people that aren't following you that just want to troll come from. My experience has been. Um, my big, like most recent was I used curtsy squats as a demo for something. And it was like, you know, I don't even know, but they were like students of strength and conditioning, like not even coaches, strength condition coaches coming after me hard. And they're like, you're going to blow your ACL out. I was like, why don't you tell every woman that does any hit class or tell any dude that, you know, like, ah, and so I had the community form that a lot of people educated people kind of, you know, came to my defense and probably had to mansplain it a little bit on my behalf to them, but I was, I'll take that. Um, but at the same time, if you keep it, if you don't give the hate back to people, you know, if you just really take a breath before you respond, generally it doesn't like blow up into something super crazy. That being said, you get trolls every once in a while, like I'll just block people too. So if they're just like vulgar and not there to actually learn anything. So you have that power as well new Instagram or starting out. Well, and I read your comments sometimes under your post as well, just to see how you take these things. And you're always very good at the good with them as well. And I think, I think people who don't know you personally, or, or only know you through Instagram can't possibly come to grips with the fact that 
you might think outside of just what you post mm -hmm. like these are you do a good job of saying hey if you have this type of issue try these things and then people will ask you all these questions underneath and you're like hey it could be this try it if it doesn't work try something else if that doesn't work go get a therapist yeah. get somebody professional you know and that says a lot right there because you're not you're not pretending to solve people through the, you know through the internet you're just giving people a lot of good options to try things yeah. and even even the you know uh, experts or you know the doctors or chiros out there they can still get ideas from it i mean that's where i follow we all know that we can keep only a handful of exercises like on the top of the mind and yeah. then i'll see something from you and i'm like oh man i haven't tried that in a long time with a patient why don't i you know vary it up or try something else um but i did also like a while back you said something about like accountability to yourself and sometimes when i take your little quizzes on your instagram stories <laughs> i'm like oh man like i don't know if this is the right nerve <laughs> like yes. and and it's yeah, same it's, it's it's a good way to keep yourself you know accountable in a way because you know we think we know everything sometimes and we can fix everybody's problems and then you're asking me what nerve goes to the quadratus femoris and i'm like wait a minute <laughs> Like, I don't know if I've thought about this in a long time. Yes. Uh, and it's a good, so how much has it actually helped you? Because I know you're not, it's not the same mental process I'm, as when you're in front of a patient in the office, right? right. I'm pretty sure you can tell me that's totally different. Mm -hmm. But what has it done for you? Uh, or do you feel like it's more for other people? Um, interesting that you say that. I kind of do. I feel like it is a bit more for other people is what it's turned into. Um, which is totally fine. Like I get messages from people all over the place that are like, I was doing your low back post and it's like brought my everyday pain down, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, could you talk to my patients? <laughs> like mm -hmm. I can't get them to do it sometimes. So, um, but it does give me more diversity in exercises, I guess. So the people that come to me, two things, actually, let me back up. Sometimes I get really weird cases from people that have found me from Instagram because they've literally been to everyone else that can't figure it out. Um, and I'm like, I am so blessed that you think that I'm going to be able to figure this out. But the reality is like, you got something crazy happening, hmm. but it kind of gives me like a different jump point for them. So what I've learned is if people have done the rounds of PT, they've done the rounds of whatever the history they come in with, like if they've done bridging and clamshells and they hate it and it hasn't worked like, cool, we're just, we're not going to start there then. So then it has given me kind of like a different exercise database in my brain, I guess. Mm. Like, let's start this, let's start there, see where you get. And then I think it was a speak, I mean, someone that you had on recently that said, you know, if they're not going to do it, like it's pointless to give them that exercise. And that's totally, totally true as well. So, um, what it's done for me, it's given me a different database, but then I also can go back and reflect a little bit. So the next time I see them or I'll email them like, Hey, I was thinking about your case. Let's add in these three other things. Um, and sometimes mm. that's something that kind of pops them up to the next level. Yeah. It was funny. Like, I think one of the first recordings John and I ever did, we brought up this idea that Stuart McGill maybe has a much easier job than most clinicians do. Yeah. And it was based on that idea that by the time they get to him, it's so narrowed down they're not going to be some acute disc patient. They're not going to be a standard sciatica. Like by the time they get him, he already knows he has to look for the kind of crazy back problem. So it's funny that you mentioned that. And I think, yeah, it doesn't necessarily make it easier. Like I was kind of joking that McGill has an easier job, but, but by the time they get to you, you know, you know, you know, you, you can already pass, surpass a whole bunch of things and look elsewhere. Yes, totally. Yeah.